In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can take BitFlows or any other tool like BitFlows, Flowmatic, and so on, how we can connect that up to OpenAI using, in this example, ChatGPT, and how we can use that to take information from a contact form. In this example, it's a complaints form create a message automatically inside ChatGPT and send that out to the person creating a complaint. In this example, we're simply going to tell them, thank you for your response kind of thing, then customize it a little bit and say one of our representatives from the relevant department, again, controlled via the AI and the form, will be in touch within the next X amount of time. What this is doing is it's not replacing the human in the entire process, it's replacing the kind of automated standard email with something that's a little bit more personal personalized to the complaint or the comment or whatever it is that's in the form and they're making it just a bit more sort of real world as if someone actually answered it. Then if you want, you can send that off to send it via email, you can send it to a Slack channel, you can do all manner of other things. The world is your clam as it were. So let's take a look at how we do something like this for ourselves. Let's start with a blank flow inside BitFlows and we're going to click to create it. Choose blank and we're going to give this a name and we're just going to click on create. So now we're into our overall flow. Now I've covered these kinds of things in many other videos, but just to give you the quick TLDR on this, everything inside an automation is created from a trigger and then you'll have one or more actions afterwards. Those actions can also be things like making decisions and things along those lines. This is a relatively simple, straightforward kind of linear path, but you can go off with decisions and conditional logic and those kinds of things. So in our example, our trigger is very simple. We've got a form created as a complaints form and depending upon what goes through there, will dictate what kind of chat GPT response we get back. Let me quickly show you the form so you get an idea. So this is our complaints form. We've got some basic info like name, email address, and so on. But then we've got the complaint type, so product, service, and so on. The date of the incident, the order number, and the urgency of the complaint, and then the actual complaint itself. So when someone fills this out, there's pieces of information that get used inside the chat GPT response to customize it. First of all, let's set up the trigger. Come back into BitFlows and we're going to select an app from the list. So click to drop this down. And as you can see, there's lots of different options here. If we come in and just do something like form, for example, you can see there's an awful lot of forms. So whatever form you're using, you should be able to cater for it inside you. Even if you're using native bricks functions and the form that's in there, you can use it here as well. For this example, we're using BitForm. So let's find that. Let's click. And you can see we've only got one trigger here, which is a submit success. So once that form has been submitted successfully, that will trigger the next action. So let's choose that from our list. And now we just need to configure some basic info. And the only thing we really need here is to tell you what form we're dealing with, which is, in this example, our complaint form. So let's drop the list down. There's our customer complaint form. We'll choose it from the list. And you can see now... This is now waiting for a response. So what we have to do here, and again, this is pretty much the same with any kind of tool like this you're using, we have to listen for the response and we have to submit that form. So we get some sample data coming into the trigger, which we can then use to actually work with the rest of our flow. So let's do that. Listen to response. We've got three minutes now. So let's jump over into our form and fill this out. There we go. We filled the form out. We've basically said it's a complaint to the billing department, the date of the incident, the urgency, and also the order number and what the complaint itself was. Let's agree to the terms and conditions and hit submit. So our form is submitted successfully. Now, if we go back into BitFlows, you can see that now response captured and there's our response. So we open the form data. You can see there's all the form fields we filled out, name, the actual complaint, the email address, phone number, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're getting value of this video and you'd like to be notified when more content like this is available, why not go down and hit that subscribe button down below? While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button as well and tell YouTube you like it. But if you're not enjoying it, hit the thumbs down twice as that works pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with this automation video. So now we can actually leverage that data inside our chat GPT. So let's move on to that next. Let's close this down. Let's add now our first action. So we'll click to up, open that up. We'll search for OpenAI and click to add that in. And you can see we've got different options now because this is an action and not a trigger. So we can do different kinds of actions and we could do multiple actions if you want to. You can have as many action steps as you need. In this example, though, we want to keep it super simple, which is going to be create a chat completion. Choose that from the list. Choose our connection. Now, I've already set up my connection to ChatGPT and any of the other tools we're going to use here, like Slack and so on. Once you've got that, you can just choose that connection, 
We can select our model. In this example, we'll choose ChatGPT4. That's perfectly fine. And then we can just build out how we want this to be handled. So the max completion tokens, how many kind of words we want this to be, let's set this to be something like 500. We're not going to worry about things like getting unique responses and so on, but we are going to come down to the message section. This is where we can build things out. So to build our message out, what we're going to do is we're going to choose our field and you can see we've got a couple of options here. We're going to set this to be an assistant. This is the role that ChatGPT is going to kind of take on. And then we've got the value and this is where we can build out our overall message. So we can use the data that's been pulled in from our submission, from our form, and that's all evidence here. So again, you can see, Paul, I was billed twice to my order, my email, my phone, my billing, and so on. All that data is available to us. So we can just reference it. So let's just say we want to build out our prompt now for exactly how we want ChatGPT to handle this. So we say the following is a form complaint, form submitted on my website. I want you to craft a sympathetic response to the author. So now we need to pull in the author's name. So all we're going to do is put a space in and say, there's the author's name, Paul. That's fine. We're going to keep it kind of informal. Put a space in and we'll say their complaint was. We'll pop this in brackets and we'll say, I was billed twice. There we go. Close that bracket down. We'll specify what department it was, which again, we can choose from here, which is billing. We keep on building our message up. So we pop the order number in so we can identify that as well. There we go. We'll pop that in. And we'll just let them know then that this is being taken care of and we will come back to them within the next 24 hours. Okay, so let's take a quick moment now to take a look at this. So our overall prompt is the, the following is the form complaint from the form submitted on my website. I want you to craft a sympathetic response to the author using the author's name. Their complaint was, outlining their complaint, directed to the particular department and the order number. Explain that the complaint is being handled by a member of that same department and that they will reply within the next 24 hours and to output the response in a HTML format. So we've used that data that's been pulled from a form to personalize and structure the prompt, which will then be used to create it inside ChatGPT. So what we're going to do next is click on test run. There we go. Our test was successful. And if we scroll down, we can see there's our output. So we can open up expand any of these out and see exactly what's going on. And we can also see the input. So we come down and check out the input. We can see there's our message, all the information we've passed over. So that's the AI side of things handled. So again, we can close this down. So what we've got so far is we've got the form being submitted, the email being created as part of ChatGPT. Now we need to actually output that email response via an email and send that back to the person that actually created the complaint. So like we've seen, we're going to add a new action in. This time we're going to search for email, which is the ordinary mail option, and say send email. There we go. So now we just go out and do the same thing again. So we can configure the data using either hard-coded or we can use data pulled in from either the form itself or the response from ChatGPT. So let's do that. The from email is going to be the person that sent it. So we'll scroll down until we get to the bit form entry, grab their email address. Same again, their from name. So again, we're going to scroll down. I'm going to get their first name and we'll put a space in and we'll put their surname in as well. Two, this is where we're going to probably pop in our email address. If you want to CC, BCC or anything else you can do. The subject, say complaint from, again, we can use their name, put a space in, put their surname in. We'll pop in their order number as well. So we'll grab that from the options. So now we've customized this. Let's spell complaint correctly. There we go. And the body. So now we need to grab what ChatGPT has actually output. So in this example, you can see there's the message, there's the content, and so on. So we're going to grab the content, and that will then pull the relevant data in. If there's any attachments, you can do that, and we say this email is in HTML format. You can do a test run. You see, test run successful. So we've now got our three stages for our overall process, our entire automation. Now, obviously, you can go way further than this. Let's say, for example, now you wanted to also send a message to Slack. Well, you could do just that just by simply coming over to the tools option. This time, we're going to grab a router, which basically allows us to go into different directions and have as many of these as you want. So we'll grab that and drop it inside here, and we'll reconnect this to the router. And then we'll grab the router, and we'll connect that to our email. So everything we've already created is still all working. But this time, we're going to come over to our apps, search for Slack, grab that from there, bring it over, and connect it to our router. Like we've seen before, we select on Slack. We're going to say we want to send a message to a channel. 
We'll choose what connection. So again, I've already created the Slack connection and I've covered this in a previous video. So I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. And then we've got the same things. So we can choose what channel. In this case, it's the old WP Tuts. The message. So we're going to grab that content from here. And send as a bot, etc. Attach any URLs, expand any links and so on. So yeah, we can do all that. We'll say we're happy with all that and click on close. You can test run this. And now we've added an extra step in. And you could do the same again. You might want to put something into your CRM. You might want to have multiple different things happening. Well, you can do that. Multiple emails might need to go off to various different places with different information in them or pull in from the form and the chat GPT response. So now let's take a look at this in action. Let's say test this flow once. We'll say we'll use the existing data because it's already in there. We don't need to go back and fill the form in a second time. That's going to go through now and you can see flow execute with existing data. It's executing the background and you can check your logs for more details. So we'll let that go through and complete. And then let's go and take a look at the response in our email. Now currently this is just a test site, so I don't have email set up. So I'm just simulating this using Fluent SMTP. But if we come and open this up, you can see complaint from Paul C for order number, blah, blah, blah. And the email address sent the time and so on. Let's open this up. And you can see there's our response now from ChatGPT. Dear Paul, so let's use my name. Thank you very much for bringing up the issue with your order number, blah, blah, blah. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience caused by the double billing. So it knows exactly what we've complained about, double billing. I'd like you to know that our complaint has been received and is currently being handled by a member of our billing department. Again, we've referenced the data pulled from the form to specify it's the billing department that's handling it. They're now working diligently to investigate and resolve your complaint, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can see how this works. I'm not suggesting you replace real people. I'm suggesting that you can easily use something like this as part of the process to at least have a nicely formatted email sent out that handles the exact request or complaint or whatever it is in this form. And this is just an example of what you could do using a tool like ChatGPT, using a form and all these other kinds of cool things. Very simple example, but hopefully what you could see is that you could easily expand this and go so much further. And also you can use whatever kind of tool you want, Flowmatic, Public Connect, Zapier, any of those kinds of tools will allow you to do a very similar thing. Now, hopefully you found this useful. If you'd like to check out more videos on working with automation, check out this playlist. All applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.